Hello, my name is Wade Nomura, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. I recently had the opportunity of catching up to Rotary International President Ian Risley and uh, give a brief interview on what he was doing, how he's been. A little history and the background on Ian and myself. Actually, Ian's wife, Juliet, was a governor the same year I was, and so we got to meet uh, even before that, but we got to be fairly good acquaintances during that time. I've also had the opportunity and request to serve as his representative to go um, to Mexico and speak on his behalf. The interview process that we had and what we did was actually filmed in a studio, and the studio itself was uh, in a location right near Pasadena. So this was in conjunction with the Rotary International, um, the Rose Parade. You'll see that. Uh, they're very active people. Ian will tell you uh, in the interview about how busy and active they are. I believe he said he only spent about seven days at home. So with that, please enjoy the video. Thank you. Welcome. We are with the president, uh, President Ian Risey from Australia, and we are going to have the opportunity now to see what it's like uh, behind the scenes of being a president. Ian, welcome. Thanks, Wayne. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, um the fifth Australian president of Rotary International, which is exciting. Uh, I'm an accountant, but don't hold that against me. Uh, I'm from just outside Melbourne in Australia, and I'm um, loving every minute of it. Great, great, outstanding. So, what got you involved with Rotary? Oh, way back in 1978, I was invited by a client who was a Rotarian to come along and speak at their, their club, the, uh, the Great Rotary Club of Cheltenham in Melbourne. And they were nice people, they stayed awake and they, <laughs> they laughed at my attempts at humour. I spoke about current developments in income tax, which uh, is not exactly riveting at the best of times. <laughs> and I thought these are really nice people. And then we had a, uh, I had a call or a few weeks later from a fellow who introduced himself as being, and this is a, a direct quote, the district governor's special representative on the chartering of a proposed Rotary Club in Sandringham. <laughs> Do you have a business card, by the way, that had all over it? Yeah, it was about that big. <laughs> and I thought, if this man has a title this long, he must be important. And he said they were starting a new club. Would I like to come along to an interest meeting? And I said, sure, um, but got busy and didn't go. And fortunately, he rang me again and said, we're having another one next week, and that one I went to. Met some really nice, interesting, well-connected people. So I thought, why would I not want to join this? So I went home and said to Juliet, do you understand uh, in this part of the world, Wade, what a snag is? No, I don't. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a sensitive new age guy, snag. Okay. okay. <laughs> and so I, uh, I'm a, I delude myself that I'm one of those. So I went home and said to Juliet, my wife, I've been invited to be interested in this Rotary Club of Sandringham. What do you think? And she said, well, look, could be good for business, we meet new people. Besides, too many of our friends are accountants. This way you can meet a lot more people. True. And it's true. Yeah, it's true. And it's yeah. what happens in life, as you know only yeah. too well, yeah. that when you associate with people that you like and you have a common purpose, they become your friends. And the, the majority of my friends now are account are, I said accountants, <laughs> heaven forbid, <laughs> are uh, Rotarians, yeah. and that's good. That is good. It's yeah. very good. So, um, what inspired you to become president? Did you have that in track when you, when you joined the club? And... A, uh, a friend of mine who was uh, district governor at the same time as me insists that way back when we were at district governor-elect training in Anaheim, as it was, I said at the time that I wanted to be president of Rotary really? International. I deny that vehemently. <laughs> that okay. could not possibly have been in my in my thinking. Okay. That was a long time ago. But <clears throat> I was happy, really happy, to apply for successfully to be a director of Rotary International. I thought I could uh, make a contribution. Right. Dare I say it? Make a difference. Mm -hmm. And it uh, it was a very worthwhile and fulfilling role. I was treasurer, and that was exciting as well. And then when I was asked by incoming Rotary International President Kalyan Banerjee to accept nomination for the Rotary Foundation trustees. I was happy to do that too. And that was a wonderful experience. So at the end of which uh, I was asked by my friend Ravi Rabindran to um, take part in the planning of his convention in, in Seoul. 
and that gave me a fairly well-rounded uh, background in Rotary. A lot of friends said I should put my hand up for the presidency and frankly I thought I'd do a good job and therefore I was happy to, to apply and was delighted to be successful. Sounds good. What you're doing, by the way, huh? you did an outstanding job of that one. That's kind. Thank you. Um, so, being president, what's it like with your club? I mean, your club, do <laughs> they have any idea that uh, you're going to have a president in their midst? Uh, there's the banner. The banner, yeah, uh, which right. says Rotary International President's Club. And um, the current president of my Rotary Club, the Rotary Club of Sandringham, is a past district governor, oh. so he understands. Okay. The vast majority of the members do not. <laughs> I, I seldom get there, but sure. Juliet and I were recently at home for a couple of weeks, and so I went to a couple of meetings of my club and got a, a wonderful reception because I, I think they're starting to realize when a lot of people <laughs> come along to their, the meetings of the club in the hope that I'll be there so <laughs> right. they can say hello, they right. start to get a feeling of maybe this is important. That sounds good. It's good fun. And Juliet also, being a Rotarian, how's that been for support wise and how did she get involved? She was district governor at the same time as you. Wait, <laughs> I, I need to point this out. <laughs> I do your Thank you for it's, bringing that up. <laughs> <laughs> it's of enormous assistance to me. Yeah. Uh, I know all of the partners of, of uh, presidents are supportive in their way. Sure. I'm grateful that Juliet, is, as well as being extremely supportive and, and a wonderful companion, uh, is also a, a wise voice on, on Rotary Matters because she was a governor more recently than me. Uh, she was a governor after I was on the board. So she's more contemporary. She has been uh, secretary of her club, which I have not. So she understands a lot of the detail and that's extremely useful. Right, and she travels with you most of the time or all the Pretty time? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Uh, the only time she hasn't been with me is brief overnight um, visits, for example, uh, Long Beach in California came over for the 100th um, celebration of, right. of their, uh, their charter and she stayed in Evanston for that. Okay. And recently I was in Pakistan and the subcontinent and she went home and I gathered there with her later. But she's almost everywhere. That's great. Outstanding. It makes it a lot easier for you too. It does. Kind yeah. of leave, leaves life more normal, sure. I would say. Uh, normal-ish. <laughs> normal-ish, <laughs> correct. Um, on the road now, how many uh, countries have you visited or have you kept track? Well, no, we haven't kept track. Uh, for our grandchildren, I, uh, I said we'll get them a, a large war map and I'll send them a list of the countries as we visit them so they can have a look at them on the map and know where Nana and Papa are. Nice. Uh, I think it's, it's somewhere over 50 so far and there are more to come. Yeah, much more to come. Um, the audience probably doesn't realize how grueling this is. Uh, tell us. In the well, mm -hmm. up to the, mm -hmm. the holiday, mm -hmm. exactly, up to the holiday times. How many times are you actually at home? And I say home as in in Australia. Uh, in Australia, uh, we were there in Australia for uh, a few days in July, and recently, just recently, yeah. And uh, we'll be back for a couple of days again in March, and that's it. Wow! Wow! So it's uh, either Evanston or on the road. And I thought we'd be in Evanston more, to be frank, but okay. there's just such a need to be out that we travel most of the time. Do you see that as being more normal than for, for presidents that your schedule kind of replicates each year? Where you, oh, do you have the demands of travel? Probably. Um, Juliet and I sat down at the very start and said one of our objectives is to, to go to places where presidents tend not to go. Okay. Because, uh, oh, let's face it, there's a lot of <coughs> rotary out there and rather than going to the same place all the time, let's see if we can go somewhere different. So we've been to Iceland, oh. we've been to Serbia, uh, we've been to Hungary, uh, this is July, we've been to uh, the island of Sardinia, whereas most people go to Rome, for example. Uh, in addition, when we went to Finland, we went not just to Helsinki, but uh, further uh, out of town, when we went to Norway, we didn't just go to, or didn't go to Oslo, we went to uh, Bergen. And when we went to Denmark, instead of going to Copenhagen, we went to Aarhus, for example. Places where presidents tend not to go. There's positives and, and negatives about that. The positive is that they're absolutely thrilled to see you, which is great. The potential negative is that um, 
they want more of you when you're there. <laughs> True. For example, in we're, I was in Islamabad, uh, Pakistan, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, they were. I mean, the demand for photographs and for interviews and for touches and things like that sure. was massive. Right. But it's part of the job, and it's exactly. it's fun. Yeah. It is. Um, Opportunities uh, to meet with heads of state. Have you seen that or had that oh, yeah. as an opportunity? I had the privilege of meeting several presidents at Fiji, Iceland, Hungary, um, oh, many. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to be able to make them or encourage them to understand what Rotary does okay. and the importance of the work that we do. In Pakistan, for example, met with the, the Prime Minister and the governors of a couple of the states to thank them for the work they're doing on polio eradication sure. and to make sure they understand that the job isn't done yet so they have to keep going mm -hmm. uh, and things like that. As far as uh, your vision, um, did you create a vision of what you want to accomplish if you were to become the president? Uh, yes and no. Okay. Uh, in that, uh, we all get the chance to have our own special emphases sure. and one of mine was to encourage Rotarians to be more involved in programs for the environment, which I happen to think is important. Uh, and we have a, a tree planting challenge. I've asked the Rotary clubs of the world to arrange for the planting of one tree, just one tree per Rotarian. 1.2 million right. Rotarians, 1.2 million trees. And that's a relatively modest effort at making sure that people understand that Rotarians care for the only planet on which we live and the planet on which we all depend. And I've been frankly way thrilled with the response. People are, are uh, really good. And it, it has an impact with governments as well. For example, in Romania, the government heard about this somehow. We have a director from Rotary International from Romania. <laughs> And they said that they wanted to plant more trees in Romania, but didn't have the resources. Would they, if they supplied the trees, could Rotary arrange for the planting? Win, win, win. Yeah, definitely. And so. how many? Well, they said, we, we hear the challenge is uh, 1.2 million. We'll provide you in Romania with 1.2 million trees. <laughs> so they're, they're planting those trees. It's, it has been outstanding, to be honest with you, even the, the clubs that I visit um, around the West Coast, same thing, they are all aware of the challenge and yeah. they are all participating in that. Yeah. It's a, well, it's a relatively simple thing to do, Wade. It's not hard to plan a trip. But with good impacts, mm. and with great impacts. True. Um, the float that you're here for also, um, we have the One Hiroshima Survivor Tree that we're putting on that one. Yeah. Uh, that's been, I would say, a, a great awareness, not only for the tree itself, but for an awareness of peace. Absolutely right. Yeah. So. And peace is important to Rotary and to everyone, but Rotary has an emphasis and that's good. Very, very true. And I think through service that that's, that's accomplished. And as you've seen, uh, being accepted to all these different countries uh, yeah. at a very high level, they appreciate and understand that, what that service is all well, about. They do, but um, you mentioned peace. It seems to me that peace is integral to everything that we do. Yeah. One of our six areas of focus, but it also relates to all the others. That's why when we have presidential uh, conferences, which we're having around the world, mm -hmm. each of them will be on one of our areas of focus, plus how that relates to peace building. Ah. So we'll have, for example, uh, basic education literacy and peace building. Okay. And that will uh, explain the relationship between the two and how the world could be made a better place and more peaceful place as a result. That is true. That's, that's very good. As far as the future, now you're halfway through your year. Yep. Did it go fast? Thanks for, thanks for reminding me. <laughs> yeah, well, you're almost there. <laughs> yeah, no, pretty much. Uh, and well, uh, I think you would have found this when you were governor. I certainly did when I was uh, on the board of directors and the trustees. The period just zaps past, particularly when, you, when you're busy. So yes, halfway through, I can't believe it. Um, We've had a challenge this year with um, the president-elect position. Unfortunately, we lost the person that was selected, uh, Sam Awari. Um, that brings Barry in with a lot of time to catch up on. Have you been working with him at all? Absolutely. Um, I was privileged to work closely with Ravi Ravindran and John Germ. I made a commitment very early. I believe in continuity, believe in sharing information. 
And so I, I was working closely with Sam and now with Barry and of course with Mark Maloney who's yeah. now been appointed to follow. Right. So that, that's really important. There's no purpose in us zigzagging all over the place. We have to have a, a, an objective and a goal. That's why our strategic plan is so important. Yeah. Very true. And I have seen that um, in the past, and I think it reflects all the way down, that if, if the leadership of the organization itself has this continuity, that it goes down all the way to the club level. Absolutely. Unfortunately, it hadn't been that way in the past. It was kind of, I would say, fractured because of that. But now it's it's definitely running a lot smoother. More goals are being accomplished, and we seem to be doing a lot more. Yeah, I, I think that's right. We try to emphasize, uh, my colleagues and I, that it's not our year of leadership. It is that. But it's more important that we show that it's our year to help Rotary shine. Right. And that's what we're trying to do. True. Now, um, as a president, you actually have two years you have to live in Evanston. So uh -huh. Tell us a little bit about what that's like and what the transition was like to actually pull up roots and have to start again. And yeah, interesting. Uh, as uh, your viewers may be aware, they're just around the corner from the Rotary International Headquarters. There's a, a, a condominium building where there are, Rotary has two, and we moved into one when Ravi moved out and uh, Barry moved into one when John moved out. And uh, yes, it's two years. Um, you need a base, you really do. It'd be very difficult to live in a hotel the whole time. Sure. We're not spending much time in Edmonston, but when we are, it's really nice to have something that we can call home. Uh, the weather's challenging. You don't go to Chicago for the weather. I've worked that out. <laughs> but, because uh, we are blessed in Australia with magnificent weather. Sure. But uh, it's, a, it's a nice suburb. It's almost, um, because of Northwestern University, it's very young, mm -hmm. a lot of young people around, a lot of nice places to, to eat and to just be busy. I love Chicago, I've got to say, it's a beautiful city. <laughs> it is a beautiful, beautiful city. city. <laughs> and that is good. And having headquarters right there gives you, uh, I would say, uh, all of the organizations, departments, everything like that, yep. right there at hand. Uh, the trap is that I go to work all the time. <laughs> it, <laughs> it is just around the corner. So I said to Julia, I'll just go and check on whatever and do this and any time of the day or night that can happen, <laughs> but, but that's fine. Tell us a little bit about uh, maybe one or two experiences that you ex had this year that really made you proud to be the president. Oh, I know there's, there's a lot of Yeah, them. there are. There's so many. Let, let me tell you about, uh, uh, about one from Australia. There's a beautiful seaside town halfway between Sydney and Brisbane on the east coast called Port Macquarie. It is one of the prettiest places you will ever go. It is uh, surf beaches and sunshine and glorious. And uh, because it is relatively isolated, when I say isolate, a lot of people move through it. One of the problems they experienced was that there were car accidents and people were in hospital but people who came to visit had nowhere to stay because if there's, if you come into, if you're in hospital and someone uh, wants to visit you, if they can't find any accommodation, they're stuck. Right. So the Rotary Clubs uh, built a, some accommodation oh. and it has been so successful that it's doubled and then doubled again in size. It's self-funding now. Wow. It's fabulous. It is. All because Rotary recognise a need. The same with uh, life-saving towers. There had been some uh, one drowning and a couple of near misses, and so the local community needed to have towers so that the lifeguards could see far enough out to sea. This is particularly the case for visitors who maybe don't realise the the inherent dangers sometimes in currents and rips and so on. And so the five Rotary Clubs in Port Macquarie built a tower in each of five beaches. So now the lifeguards can see as far as they can. So Good examples. It, it, those are great examples. Yeah. I mean, it fits a need. Rotary finding and fixing the needs. Oh, sure. Those needs. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not just, obviously not just in Australia. We've seen so many examples all yeah, over the yeah. place. I think it'd be interesting for the audience to actually talk about your Rotary moment, first time ever. What, what was that? And if you could share that with us, because mean, I know you've, uh, the Rotary moment is, 
that one time where you really appreciate the organization and what you could do as a Rotarian individual. You mean when the light bulb went off? And, <laughs> Pretty well, yeah, exactly. Like that. that would be it. Uh, again, there's been a few, but uh, I remember when Juliet and I were on, on holiday or going on holiday to the beautiful island of Bali, which a lot of Australians go to. It's a tropical island not far away as part of Indonesia. And so a Rotarian from one of the clubs in our district said, see if you can catch up with this particular young man, whose name was Rantun, because he had been to Australia to have uh, a heart operation paid for by ROMAC, Rotary Oceania Medical Aid for Children. It's an acronym in Rotary. We have the odd one or two. <laughs> and so I was, uh, we, Juliet and I, were able to track him down. And he was, um, we actually went to visit his family. And there's this little kid who was now, uh, or about five or six, and he'd been two or three when he'd had the operation, running around uh, full of life with a, a scar from here to here mm. because he'd had major heart surgery. Okay. And all of that because of what Rotary had done. And I thought, uh, it's a bit like polio eradication. What could I as an individual do to, to solve such a, a major health issue? And the answer is nothing. Mm. But together with 1.2 million of, of my closest friends yeah. and all of our partners um, with UNICEF and WHO and the Gates Foundation and so on, we're on the, on the verge of one of the greatest uh, health initiatives in history because we work together. A lot to be said for that. True. Um, now, the Polio Plus program mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how that's working out, looking at it from I would say your position as president, how much emphasis do you have to put on that one? And how do you think those efforts are going worldwide? Well, our friends in the Rotary Foundation with Chairman Paul Nettle and his uh, fellow trustees, obviously it's, this is their highest priority. It's also Rotary's highest priority because it's absolutely critical having made the commitment way back in 1985 right. that we should uh, seek to eradicate polio. I don't think anyone knew it would take this long or cost this much, but we are now almost there. I don't know about you, I'm yeah. tired of this. <laughs> we need to glue these <laughs> together. Be nice. And we're, we're getting we closer. Are very we're getting closer. And, and uh, when I was in Pakistan, I had the chance to, to chat to, uh, to the Minister for Health and, and so on, and they appreciate enormously what Rotary has done by way of its leadership and its advocacy. Um, it won't be long, but uh, we have, it's absolutely critical that we keep at it and keep at it. We have made a commitment. Some people say it's down to 20 cases a, a year. Why keep going? Let's divert our resources yeah, yeah. to something else. Well, we keep going because unless it's eradicated, sure. it can return. It can return everywhere. Yeah. Absolutely critical that we keep going. Very good. Thank you for that one. A little personal question now. Since we shop at the same store for our ties, <laughs> yeah, tell yeah. us a little bit about your theme tie. <laughs> yeah, it's a little more, uh, shall I say, out there than some, <laughs> some theme ties. I, I enjoy growing things, uh, particularly Australian native plants. And when uh, we were designing the tie and scarf, well, when I say we were designing, we were talking to the design team at Evanston. And uh, a young lady who heads the department, Jane DeMoss, said, what do we want? And I, I thought of something along these lines, the yellow dots being representatives of the Australian floral emblem, the uh, golden wattle, Acacia pycnantha, and the, the oblong shapes are the leaves of the trees. Okay. And uh, it's a bit, uh, it's different, but I love it. <laughs> you but I'm not exactly of... impartial. <laughs> no, I get a lot of compliments on the tie also. That's good. And your theme for the year, making a difference. Yeah, right. Um, I know a lot of my, my predecessors thought for a long time about their theme. Um, frankly, it took me about 10 minutes mm. because as soon as I thought of Rotary making a difference, again, the light bulb went off and I thought, that's what we do. That is what Rotary does. It makes a difference every single day, not just in the lives of the people who benefit from our many programs, and, and that's fabulous, it also makes a difference in the lives of every Rotarian. People that have had the chance to uh, to personally grow and develop okay. 
for because of that. So I'm a again I'm not impartial, but I think Rotary making a difference really does encapsulate what we do. Agreed with that. Looking forward, uh, last question I have for you now. What do you see in the next six months? Um, is it going to be a hundred percent wide open, or is there something that you're going to try and focus on to accomplish? Because you only have half your half your turn. Thanks to go for here. the reminder, Blade. I appreciate that. <laughs> Again, <laughs> uh, the the schedule is is set pretty okay. much, but I really want to to go around and thank Rotarians for what they do. The planning for the convention in Toronto, or as they call it, Toronto, is uh, is pretty advanced. My Good friend Gordon McAnally from Scotland is chairman of the of the convention committee, and he and his committee are doing a great job. We communicate regularly. I think it'll be a wonderful uh, convention. We're estimating somewhere between uh, twenty-three and twenty-five thousand okay, to attend, which is a good number. Yeah. So that'll be fun. The six presidential conferences are taking place in six different cities of the world, so I'm looking forward to those. They'll be they'll be fun. Uh, and there's a lot of people to visit and flags to wave. Great. Outstanding. Well, looks like we're out of time there. So, yeah, thank you very much for your Wait. time. And thanks for your you, service. You've done a great job. You too. Thank you. Cheers. Thank Thanks. I hope you enjoyed that video. As you can see, um, Rotary International Presidents, every, every year, they fascinate me uh, as far as what they do. Outstanding people doing outstanding things. And you can see they are very passionate about, about what they do. And as a Rotarian, I'm very proud and uh, in awe of all of the great things that are done through this organization because of leadership like gentlemen like uh, Ian. So with that, thank you very much and we will see you next time.